Okay, so we're going to finish chapter five with the proof of something I mentioned earlier about the dimple versus egg. I just told you that this particular polar equation will have a dimple like this one on the right hand side here. This is the dimple if P is less than 2Q. Now we want to prove it. And I think this is just kind of an interesting way to end the chapter. Um, I can't imagine them asking you this kind of proof, but who knows, stranger things have happened in these exams. So it says, what is the difference in terms of the number of tangents perpendicular to the initial line? So we're talking about vertical lines here. Well, for the egg, you're going to have one here and you're going to have one here. So there are two tangents. But for the one with the dimple, you're going to have a tangent that's bouncing off those two bits, a second one here and a third one. So for the dimple, there are three tangents and we're going to investigate what happens for these vertical lines. Now for vertical tangents, we know that dx d theta is equal to zero. So we're actually just going to start working out what dx uh, d theta is. So we know that x is equal to r cos theta. So x is equal to r, which is p plus q cos theta multiplied by cos theta. So it's going to be p plus cos theta, sorry, p cos theta plus q cos squared theta. And because I know I'm going to differentiate it, I'm going to have it written like this. So dx d theta is going to be minus p sine theta. And when you differentiate this with the chain rule, you would bring down the power. I've put a minus because cos is going to go to minus. Reduce the power by 1, and you've got the sine theta that gave us the negative as well. And we want dx d theta to be equal to 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say that minus p sine theta minus 2q cos theta sine theta is equal to 0. Obviously, we can factor out the sine theta. I'm, in fact, going to do a minus sine theta. So I get p plus 2q cos theta equals 0. So either sine theta equals 0 or cos theta equals minus p over 2q. Well, let's investigate the easy one to begin with. Let's talk about this. So if sine theta equals 0, then theta is equal to 0 or pi, and obviously it's just going to keep cycling around. So zero is this angle. So this line here is when theta is equal to zero. Pi is this angle from the pole. So this one is that theta is equal to pi. For the dimple, this is the line zero. So this one is when theta is equal to pi. And this is the line zero. So this is when theta is equal to zero. So what's happening here is for this one, we've got this extra tangent and we need to figure out where that extra tangent is coming from. And in terms of the angles, you can see it's coming from this bit and this bit here. There's two angles that are going to give you that tangent. So it will be a dimple. It will be a dimple shape if this equation gives us another solution for theta. So let's investigate that. We've got cos of theta is equal to minus p over 2q. And we can investigate the thing. So first of all, if p is What's the one in the question? Let's say if p is greater than 2q. If p is greater than 2q, then cos theta would be equal to, oh, sorry, would not be equal to, this would be, um, if you imagine the top bit is bigger than the bottom bit, then we know that cos theta is going to be less than minus 1. Just think carefully about what I'm saying there. I'm saying if the top bit is bigger than 2q, it would be like, I don't know, 2q plus 1 over 2q. This whole thing is going to be more, is going to be less, it's going to be more negative than negative one. So cos theta is going to be less than negative one. So if p is greater than 2q, cos theta is less than minus one, and this has no solutions. Now we're going to check another one. What about if p is equal to 2q? Well, if p is equal to 2q, then we would have minus 2q over minus 2q, which is minus one. And when you solve this, you get that theta is equal to pi. But this is already um, a solution. And it's already a solution from over here. So this still doesn't give a third tangent. And so our last one to check 
is if p is less than 2q. Well, if p is less than 2q, then we get here that cos theta is going to be greater than minus 1. And actually, it's also going to be less than 1 in this particular case, in which case this produces an extra, in fact, it produces an extra pair of solutions. corresponding to the third tangent. Hence, um, it has a dimple if p is less than 2q, which is what it asked for here. OK, so that's it on chapter 5. Really challenging chapter. Well done if you've made it to the end of this. Um, and good luck with the rest of your studies.